In 2023, when I was 18 years old, I had to build a complete application from scratch all by myself in one year for my A-level computer science course. I literally spent the first month staring at a blank screen with no idea what to do until I eventually landed on the idea of making a mobile application called Daily Habits. It was basically a way for people to keep track of habits using an app and at the end of it, I had to showcase it to my teacher with documentation to receive a final grade. At the time, it did seem sort of silly because I never ended up using my final project for anything useful, but it turns out that the average software engineer in the United States makes $112,000 per year. So today I'll be going over the seven levels of software development so you can get your hands on some of that sweet, sweet cash. Level zero, can't code. This is where around three quarters of the world currently is. You've never coded anything beyond hello world and to you, every programming language just looks like a jumbled mess of words. You probably think that people who can code must be really smart and you've always wanted to learn, but you've just ended up being either too overwhelmed with getting started or just not had the time. But what you don't understand is that if you can read and understand a basic flowchart, then you already know how to code because coding is just literally the text version of flowcharts. Let's say, for example, that you want to create a program that checks if it's a leap year. You could create a flowchart like this, but to write this in code, you literally just translate this into text. So input year becomes year equals int input and then year greater than zero, year if year greater than zero, then do all this, uh, else you would have no at the bottom, so we'll put else uh, return, that will return to the top. Input year becomes year equals integer input. Year greater than zero becomes if year greater than zero. Year divisible by four becomes year percent sign four, this is the modulus symbol. Year divisible by 100 and year divisible by 400 becomes these, then you would print leap year if all of them are true, and then else, if the last one is not true, then it's not a leap year. If this one is not true, this for this 100, then the answer is it is a leap year. And if it's not divisible by four, then print not leap year. And if it's not even greater than zero, then you can do else return and that'll just return nothing. So you can literally just go line by line translating each of the elements of the flowchart into Python code and there you go, you're now a software developer. Level one, tutorial enjoyer. Once you get over the hurdle of actually downloading a programming language and an editor, you can start learning from tutorials like ones from Programming with Mosh or FreeCodeCamp.org. But for some reason, I always found it impossible to learn to code from anyone who doesn't have a heavy Indian accent. And for that reason, the rest of this video will be delivered in a heavy Indian accent. On this level, you will learn the basic syntax where you can write applications that fit in a single page, but even still, most of it will just be copied and pasted from ChatGPT. But if you rely too heavily on ChatGPT, then you'll never progress out of level one because you're not really doing any coding. Instead, you're doing something called vibe coding where the AI is doing most of it for you. Level two, the peak of Mount Stupid. You've now followed one of those four hour YouTube tutorials all the way through and you think you know everything. You can build small apps without a tutorial and you know the basic tools of a language and how to use them. Most people on this level are are either purely front-end developers or back-end developers, meaning they either know how to create a really good user interface but have no clue about servers or anything like that, or occasionally, sometimes they're actually more clued up on the back end than the front end. Typically, you learn all the front end stuff on YouTube because it's fun, and then you learn all the back end stuff in university because they force you to learn it. You might even have your own programming project that you're currently working on, but given that you're on this level, it will almost certainly be complete crap and will have zero users. But hey, at least you're having fun. Level three, student slash junior. On this level, you are essentially required to learn how to use GitHub to manage and organize your projects because in most situations, if you ever want to build anything serious, you're going to be working with a team of people rather than just you. Unless if your name's Terry Davis, in which case you'll be spending 10 years all by yourself in your parents' basement developing an operating system because God ordered you to do so. If you're lucky, you might even get hired as an intern at some company while you'll be looking after some tiny piece of their software that does some incredibly mundane tasks, but hey, at least you're earning something. So what interests you in our company? Money. Um, okay. Uh, how do you respond to criticism? Well, I'll usually try to pin the blame on them 
and then I'll start shouting and screaming. And if I get really angry, I'll start throwing things. You're hired. Most of the time, you won't actually be writing any code from scratch though. You'll be debugging and reviewing code that was written 12 years ago from a guy who no longer works at the company and was written in the most confusing way with comments that provide no information and only contain random angry rants by the guy when he was frustrated and stuck on some problem. Level four, career slash senior. Congratulations, you're now a full-time software developer. So you design subsystems, take care of maintenance and reliability, and mentor your juniors. You're fluent in software development methodologies like the Agile development methodology, which is the most commonly used one today, which is basically just iterating constantly between updating your software and then testing it against your own criteria and the criteria of stakeholders and customers. And suddenly your life is broken down into two week sprints where you'll be constantly adapting your product and receiving feedback on it. The project you're working on is no longer really yours because you're always receiving feedback from product managers, quality assurance, your team leader, stakeholders, executives, designers, customers, and the legal team. Level five, system engineer. You design cross team platforms and own and maintain larger systems. You can predict failure modes and design for recovery and you're probably so good at this that you basically do it all the time, even in your day to day life. Managing your life like a little project and doing risk analysis on every little thing like your route to work, uh, what food you're gonna have today. You'll most likely be working with distributed systems, data modeling at scale, and you might also be in charge of cybersecurity at some company, which means delivering a presentation to your team every couple months or so, telling them not to store all their passwords in a file on their computer called passwords.txt. You spend more time designing rather than coding, and your new favorite way to code is by designing a flowchart and then telling your team to do the code part for you. Level six, engineering leader. You shape technical strategy across multiple products, influence company level decisions, and mentor other leaders. You worry about product market fit as much as the actual implementation itself, and most of your day is now just planning for meetings and sitting in meetings. You might have your own programming project on the side, and now you know how software is actually built by large companies, you can build something that's actually useful by applying the same principles. All you wanted to do when you were younger was write code, and now all you do is attend meetings where you mentor leaders who lead teams who write code. And in a weird way, you kind of miss being on level two when everything was just a few lines of code away and all that mattered was whether it runs or not. Level seven, living legend. You build systems or tools that change how people work. People quote you as if you're some kind of religious text and so many companies rely on your libraries that if you were to one day get up and just fumble around with the code, you could literally cause the stock markets to crash. You're either an eccentric genius or a visionary founder or most likely both. On this level, you could create your own programming language and compiler if you really wanted to. And ever since VS Code started to include that AI completion feature, you've been using Notepad for all of your coding because I am not gonna become another one of those vibe coders. <coughs> Every piece of software that you release contains a readme.txt, which is 12 pages long and contains your entire life philosophy, because why not? Click on this video if you wanna see more and piss off.